What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are on part five of the TikTok compilations. First time you realized America really messed you up. We're going to be checking this out today. Hope you all have an awesome day. Let's start. If you're an American currently living abroad, what is one time that made you realize that America really messed you up? I have so many of these. <laughs> so I currently live in London with my now husband. And when we were dating and I would come visit him because we were doing the whole long distance thing, you know, every time I would come, I would lose at least, at least five pounds. Without a doubt, it happened every single time. What? And I truly think it's just because the food over here is required to be better for you because I was not watching what I ate. We would eat desserts all the time. We were doing the tour of sea things. So we eat out a lot. And on top of that, I don't exercise when I'm over here. And I also am not walking around because I use my wheelchair. So yeah, it's literally just because there's better food laws here in the United Kingdom oh, yeah. instead of in the United States. Yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, I, that's a big thing. Holy cow. Holy cow. And, and, and it is so hard for us to lose weight at that so it's like double whammy so there you go that's my story so we live in ireland and our oldest is in senior infants which is the equivalent of the second half of kindergarten she did ki kindergarten back in the states and she came home from school one day and she said mommy we had a drill today and i went oh uh, active shooter drill no bomb threat no mommy it was a fire drill <laughs> well oh okay i mean Back home, she had active shooter drills every month in kindergarten. We get these phone calls and it'd say, oh, in accordance with Florida law, blah, blah, blah. Everything's gone back to normal. And I'm just sitting there thinking of my kid hiding in a bathroom uh, with 30 other kindergartners and her poor teacher trying to keep all these kids quiet. I'm like, that's not normal here. That's something we got used to because that's what America is. It's just one big active shooter drill. Yeah, right. Hey, y'all. Yeah. I am an American expat currently living in Kuwait. It is one of the countries in the Middle mm -hmm. East region. Um, living here, I had to overcome a lot of trauma from my home country. As you can see, I am black. And being yeah. black in America, you're usually followed around stores to make sure you're not stealing. No one offers you help. No one offers you guidance. They just try to make sure you're not stealing because clearly that's what all black people do. Here, people follow you around the stores. However, it's because of the luxury of it all. I mean, they're following you around the stores holding your carts. They're placing things on the shelf. They're helping you get items. They're helping you try on things. And that was one of the traumas I had to overcome living here that they don't think I'm a criminal. They just want me to be an actual customer. I feel like it would be hard too as if I was a black person thinking they were looking at you, thinking you're stealing because of your skin color. I've been, that that's also happened to me several, several times, and it still does. Like, I guess I'm just, I'm an awkward person anyway, but apparently when I'm like walking around in the stores, it maybe look like I'm like stuffing my, or my pockets, or, you know, I'm just, just weird or like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but I don't, I don't always think it's because of the skin color. I think a lot of people just don't trust, trust people. And, uh, it happens to everybody. It really does. I, I, it happens to me all the time and I hate it. Oh, I got this one. So I was in Tallinn. Estonia and I had like this really bad feeling in my chest. I felt terrible and I thought I was having a panic attack But I wasn't totally sure so I went downstairs to the front desk the hospital called an ambulance the ambulance came They did a bunch of tests gave me some medicine calmed me down and, and did a whole bunch of stuff It was all done in the ambulance and then we were done They gave me some medicine to go and they were like, okay, go rest and then I was like, okay um, but do, what do I, what do I owe you? Like, I live in Finland, what do I owe you? And they were like, 
what do you mean? And I was like, well, how do I pay for this? And they were like, oh no, this is free. And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, no, this is, this is free. Don't worry. And then I felt. I don't know if my computer's wigging out. I really don't. Maybe it's, just, I don't know what's going on, but like, like, am I tripping out over here? <laughs> I feel like I am. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I will always know if I go anywhere else. I'm not, if I have to go to the hospital, I'm just going to be like, I'm not even going to ask them about no medical bills because I know everything's free. We don't pay up front when like, for instance, I just went to the doctor, um, just as a, like a three months checkup on, on my medication and they let me go in. I got, I was able to get my medicine, you know, my prescription or whatever, and yeah, I got something in the mail today. I owed $25. So I was thinking, uh, for some reason, I was thinking it's going to be a little bit more than that. But no, that was that was all it was. And then uh, I didn't have to pay for my medications. So that that was that was nice. Really guilty for everything. <laughs> Nine months before I moved to Ireland, I was there on a vacation. And the person I was with, we had a car. And we stayed at a golf resort, kind of in the middle of nowhere because it was the off season. So it was actually really affordable. There was a gated front entrance to this golf resort and there was a small little village on the other side of it. And because we were pretty far back in the property and it was January, so the weather was kind of crappy, we often would drive if we needed to run to the store for anything or to a restaurant. We became friends with the front gate attendant because we were in and out all the time. So one day we're driving to go to dinner and I had asked him, Hey, what's the legal limit for like drinking and driving here? I wasn't planning to do anything stupid, but I'm also a public health major and knowing that Ireland is known for its drinking culture, I was curious. So I thought I'd ask. The guy looked at me completely dumbfounded. He's like, what? So I clarified the amount of alcohol you can have in your system and still legally drive. And he says, none. So my mother was a registered. I didn't know that was a thing. That's, huh. yeah, we could have like one beer an hour, I think is like the legal, if, as long as you only drink one beer an hour, you're good to drive. I don't even know. I don't drink, so I, I really, I really don't know, but, huh. Nurse, she was working at two separate hospitals. Both of those positions were full time. Um, she was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Mm. Uh, she had three children and had to work those two full time jobs for several years because she needed the health benefits because she couldn't afford her chemotherapy. So while she was going through chemo, radiation, all kinds of other treatments because her cancer was pretty um, advanced and there were still some clinical trials for things. So while she's going through all of that, she's still had to work about 72 hours each week. We moved to Canada shortly after she passed away and after my father was left with over $50,000 of medical bills um, and moved to Canada, everything's free. Healthcare, just free. They just give it to you. And then when you die, they just wipe it out. I do know that when my brother died. Uh, he had hospital bills, and all you had to do was show them the death certificate, and boop, gone. Isn't that crazy? Just click the button, and it's, all that is just gone. All that worry is just gone. So, so weird. Cliff. Okay, so I live in England now, but I do this thing where every time I enter a building, I like analyze like, okay, if someone comes in with a gun, where can I hide? Where can I run? What are my emergency exits? What are my chances of getting shot? So I think, okay, if he enters through this door, I'm probably going to get shot. If he enters through that door, I probably won't get shot because of the angle. And I try to like, you know, work it out all in my head. <laughs> and so one time I was on a date with this guy and we were at a bar and I was kind of like looking around like, okay, like maybe I can hide here. Maybe I can hide here. Just kind of like analyzing the area. And he's like, why are you looking around? Like you look crazy. You're drawing attention to us. Like what the hell is wrong with you? Kind of. And I was going to say, oh, I'm just looking for an emergency exit or a place to hide in case someone comes in with a gun. And then I realized gun crime isn't really a thing here so yeah 
Oh my gosh, such a great question. I have so many. Uh, the one that sticks out in my mind right now is the first time I celebrated the 4th of July and the Kiwis were like, oh, happy 4th of July. And I'm like, yeah, suckas. We broke away from the queen a long time ago and we have freedom and blah, blah, blah. And they were like, hold on. What freedoms don't we have? And why is it bad that other countries work together to protect each other and help each other? And America's always talking about freedom and what freedoms do you have that we don't have? And I was like, hold up. All this rhetoric that I was told my whole life, the land of the free, we need to fight for our freedom. And it's such a value in the American society. And when you think about how many countries are just as free, where does this freedom value come from? I mean, it came back from the Revolutionary War, but hello, there's a lot of countries that are free. It was eye-opening. Yeah, I bet it was. So I'm an American who is currently living in Canada, and in 2019, I was working on a film set, and we were breaking for lunch, and, and I promise this isn't a joke setup, but it was an American, a Canadian, a New Zealander and an Australian were all waiting and having lunch together. And a truck backfires. Thinking it was a gunshot, I immediately hop underneath the table and like am looking around before I realize what it was. And as I slowly get up, everybody's like, What? Why, why is she? And the Australian goes, You're an American. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so in about 2012, 2013, I lived yeah. in the Netherlands. That'll wake you up. Netherlands, and I was learning Dutch. So when I watched the news with the Dutch subtitle, subtitles, sorry, um, my host mom would explain to me what was going on. And I saw this priest and apparently he had been stabbed. And I'm like, oh, why is he on the news? He's been stabbed, but he's still alive. And she was talking about, like, you know, how it was a big thing because priests don't typically get stabbed, blah, blah, blah. But I'm still wondering, like, what's what's the big deal? And then she's like, well, Sarah, you're from America. You have guns. And I'm like, well, yeah, we have guns. And she's like, well, over here, we don't have guns. So this is big news because this guy was stabbed. And I'm still sitting there like he's still alive. And that's when I realized we're, we're a bit f***ed up um, because I was questioning why a priest being stabbed was news. If, if, he, was, if he was dead, how would he be on the news? I wasn't drunk at the time, but good point. Hey, what? Okay, so I came up to Ontario a few years ago for school after already getting my bachelor's in the States. And me and my office mate were sitting there going through our bills because they had just come out and our research fellowships were being applied. And I was like, oh, look, like, wow, this is like really cheap. And she looks at me and she's like, what are you talking about? Especially yours. Yours is like several grand more than mine just because you're international. I was so used to paying so much for university in the States that I thought Canadian tuition was cheap. When really it's not. So, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, America. <laughs> okay, so I've got this one. So I went to South India in 2013 for a school trip and we all ate at a restaurant and most of us got food poisoning and ended up getting really, really sick, couldn't keep anything down, vomiting, diarrhea, the whole work. There were two of us, me and another kid, that were really not doing hot. We were getting really dehydrated and so they ended up sending us to a hospital. We took a tuk-tuk and went to the emergency room. I ended up getting two IV bags and spending a few hours there. And at the end, when they told me how much it was going to be when I left, they told me $9. Being an American, I was like, hold up, hold up. Did he mean 900, 9,000, right? No, $9. $9 for medication, IV, emergency, everything. Wow. What? Dude, that's, that's insane. I don't know probably was in and out ours take forever like i really gotta be feeling like i'm dying to want to go to the emergency room because i know it is a whole thing it really is i'm not exaggerating that one bit guys that was a good video let me know down in the comments what you guys think don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any more content i appreciate you thank you so much and have a good day guys bye